In today's video, we are slightly going to bend the rules to the way we like them. What we're going to do is we are going to use view transitions, but we're not going to transition a complete view. We are going to use it for micro transitions. And specifically, we're going to recreate the Mega menu on Stripe's website. A lot of people have asked me, can you please make this because I want to know how this works, perhaps with frame motion, but I thought we can do this with view transitions as well. And if you don't know view transitions, you can, for example, take a look at this example by Astro. What it usually does is it animates shared elements on a page from one page to the other page. However, we can simply use this to make the Stripe animation as well. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's first take a look at what the end result looks like. Because like I said, we're slightly bending the rules and view transitions aren't really meant for this yet, but it works and you can do it. It only has a few pitfalls. So let's first look at how it works. If we hover every menu item, you see that we have quite a nice transition. There is, however, if you, for example, switch between products and solutions, you see that the gray background of the, this bottom section kind of disappears outside of the products menu. And if you look at Stripe's example, it's just looking way, way better. And one other thing that we are still waiting for to land in view transitions is the fact that you can stop an animation midway. Because if I move my cursor to resources, you see that there's a slight delay before the animation catches up. And somehow it also feels a bit satisfying that there's this small delay. But the main reason that this is happening is because the point events are canceled when the transition is happening. That's simply how view transitions are built right now. And there is new features incoming that you can soon interrupt these animations. So if you would move really quickly, it would still update accordingly. But for now, this is one of the things we have to live with if we want to live on the edge. Dangerous. But the main reason I want to show you this today is because it's rather simple to add this. If you look at Stripe's example, it probably has taken them a lot of time to get to the point where they are with that navigation. But for us, it is only adding a few lines of JavaScript and it works. So let's do that. Let's first take a brief look at the initial state that we're starting with. If you hover the menu, then you see that there's no animation yet but all of the menu items simply appear. And if we would use tap, then we can also tap through the step navigation. And as soon as we continue to the main navigation item, it opens the next menu item. So that's looking quite okay. It's not 100% accessible, but that's also not the goal of this video. And if we quickly take a look at the code, then we can see how this works as well. To start, I simply have an array with all of the menu items that we want to use. And in there, there is a sub navigation and even a bottom bar if it's in the navigation. And then in our app, we simply loop through the nav and then for each item, we render a list item. If there's no navigation, we simply render an anchor and otherwise we render a button and that button has an on focus or on click handler that sets the active navigation item in the state. What it also does is it says an area expanded attribute as a Boolean if it's expanded or not which helps a little bit with accessibility, but does not do the full thing that you need to do. Um, however, based on this area expanded attribute, we are actually checking if a peer, so a sibling has area expanded, and if that's the case, the submenu that's right after it will automatically be display block. And inside that submenu, there's the left bar that's possibly there, there's the sub navigation items and the bottom bar as well. And then I didn't implement any escaping out of the sub navigation to close. What I did for now is you can only have an on pointer leaf of the navigation. So as soon as you move your cursor out of it, it will automatically close the navigation. Again, that's not fully accessible, but that's not the goal for today. Because the goal of this video is adding in some animations with very little effort. So let's do that right away. The way view transitions work is you do a change in the DOM and when you do that, you do that within a function document.startViewTransition. And any changes you do in there, the browser automatically compares and automatically animates between the two states. So that looks, for example, like this. Let's say we create a new function called setActiveSub. And then we're going to rename this state to underscore setActiveSub. So this is kind of a private property that we shouldn't use in our JSX. 
but we should use this function from now because it will do a little bit more. That function gets an ID, which is either a number or a null, because it's null if it should close the submenu. And then what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna run document.start view transition, and that takes in a function. And in that function, we're simply gonna set the active sub. And if you're not using React, this is already everything you have to do. But because we're using React and React updates the state asynchronously, we need to wrap this in a function by React called flush sync. And what this function does is it forces React to immediately update the state and do it in a synchronous way instead of asynchronously. And if we do that, then automatically our components will call this function because we kept the same name. So they will all call our new function now, which by itself will call our state update. And that state update will trigger the re-render, but because we're using flush sync, it's happening immediately and the browser can take over the view transitions. So what does it look like now? Well, not too beautiful yet. It's flashing. And that is because our pointer leave event is called. So let's for a second just comment this out so we can see what happens then. And you see that there's some sort of fade happening. And that's exactly what is happening. This is the default behavior of the browser. What it's doing, it is fading the screen between the two states. So it's making a screenshot actually of the full page and then it fades between the two of them. But that's not too beautiful yet. So we can instruct the browser to animate specific elements instead of everything at once. And the way that works is by adding a new property called view transition name. So let's go to the wrapper div of our set navigation, which is this div. And in there, we're gonna add a view transition name called subnav. And if we hover it, you can see the class tailwind generates, but it simply generates a property view transition name subnav, and that's all it does. And if we now would refresh and we would hover, you already see that the navigation is now moving from left to right and the browser is doing everything. And the only reason it is doing that is because we made this a separate element that needs to transition. And then the browser comes up with a nice transition with it. And I mean, for 90% of you out there, this could already be more than enough. However, we're gonna take it a little bit further. First, what we also need to do is we need to make sure that the view transitions are supported because they're not supported in all browsers yet. And if they're not supported, this function would never get called and you would never update the step navigation anymore. So that means that we need to do a small check where we check if document.startViewTransition and if it's available, then we simply run the view transition and otherwise we just run the set state that will simply update it and then it will still work, but not with an animation, which is a fine way of doing this. Now, one thing we first need to add still is the fact that you now can't hide the navigation anymore because if you just move away, nothing happens. And that is because we just removed our on pointer leaf. But if we would add that again, you would see that everything starts to flash and that we see the navigation and don't see it again and don't. And what's happening here is what I briefly explained in the beginning of the video. As soon as the transition is happening, the browser loses its hover or focus states because the whole document simply freezes its state and you can't interact with it until the animation has completed. And there's GitHub issues that they are currently working on adding that interruptibility, as they call it, so you can still interact with the page and even change the animation mid-state. But for now, it's not working yet, and that's why we are kind of bending the rules right now. However, we can pretty much prevent this from happening by doing a check if it's currently transitioning, and if it is, then we simply don't close the menu if we pass a null into this function. And for that, I'm actually gonna create a ref that we're gonna use for this called const is transitioning ref is use ref from react where we pass in false. So this ref we can use inside this function. And the reason that we're using a ref in react is because we don't want to use any memoization that will update this function as soon as the 
Boolean changes, which would be the case if we would make it a use callback with a state as a dependency, then it would rerun this function. And since it changes this in the middle of this execution, it would update this function while it's running, which wouldn't really be desirable. So if we create a ref, we can actually mutate this value without rerunning this function. So we can then take this ref and set it to true. And at the end, we set it to false. And then we can do a check. If we're currently transitioning, then we simply don't do anything. And then we still need to do one thing because the transition of course takes a while. So that means that it returns a promise. We can get a const transition from this and then we can say await transition dot finished. That means that this function becomes async as well. And then we wait before transition is finished before we set this ref back to false. Oh, and now I noticed that I actually put it inside of the view transition function, which should not be the case, of course. We should add it after the view transition. And that means that this async is not correct here, but should be added over here. So now we properly await the transition before we continue. And if we then hover and move our cursor off of it, it will close the navigation. However, it won't do it if we move off to the bottom. And that is because at the very last moment, it is still triggering a hover of this navigation and it's activating it again. So what we also need to do is we need to double check if the ID we're passing in is not equal to the active sub. Because that way we don't trigger a transition from one element to exactly the same element. And because we've now used a state variable inside of a set function, we should make this a use callback function, which then depends on the active sub. And then we need to add the async back. So this way, this function regenerates when the active sub updates. And of course, it should be that the ID is equal to the active sub and then we return because otherwise it will never update. And if you do that and you move to the bottom, it also closes the navigation. And now we've made this in a way that it's working both with browsers who support view transitions and also with browsers who don't support view transitions. However, we can still customize this animation. And one thing that I would like to customize still is the fact that if we take a quick look at Stripe's animation, you see that if you go to the right, the links come from the right. And if you go to the left, the links come from the left side. And for that, we need to do a little bit of JavaScript, but it is still pretty straightforward to add this logic. So the first thing we need to know is if the user is moving left or right that decides what type of animation we need to trigger, or at least what the starting point of our animation is. And to know which direction the user is going, we need to kind of save the previous element in memory. And what better way to keep this in memory than creating another ref? So let's just create a new const previous sub ref is then again, either a null or a number. And that ref we can set at the end of our transition to the active sub and then inside our update function we can check what direction we're going to and i'm only going to add it inside of this function because the transition is not kicked off if view transitions are not supported so the direction isn't really relevant you could decide to for example create a function called const update navigation and then add all of your logic let's do it the proper way number or null and then we update this function and this function because as soon as we do that, we can check the direction we're going into by comparing the ID to the previous sub ID. And based on that, we can, for example, set a CSS variable. So that CSS variable, we can set on the document element because we're going to need it inside the view transition and it only has access or it's only parent is the document element. So any variables we want to use inside of it, we need to use there. So we can, for example, then create a variable called set property where we call it minus minus sub nav direction. And then if the previous sub ref dot current is smaller than the ID, then we're going to the right. So we're going to add a one and otherwise it will be minus one. We do however need to wrap a small check around this because we need to have both the previous 
ID as well as the current ID. Otherwise we can't do any calculations and then we'll probably just default to a specific direction. But if we then compare this and set this to one or minus one, you see that if we hover at the animation, you see that in the HTML here, you see the minus one or one appear depending on the direction we're going to. It does, however, seem to lack one behind. And when looking a bit further, I saw that I set the previous value to actually the current version of the state, which is not correct. We should, of course, set this to whatever we passed in because that's the new version is our new previous version, if that makes sense. And if you then check it, you see that the direction is always correct as soon as you switch. How can we then decide what the view transition animation will be? Well, it's not too complicated anymore. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to our content, which is everything except the wide wrapper around our set navigation. And I want to give that a view transition name as well. We give that name of view transition name subnav content. And we're giving that a specific name so we can animate this individually. And how can we then change those animations? Let's hop over to the CSS file where you see a few keyframes I've already defined, which we'll look at in a second. Let's first make this animation a little bit slower. We can target one of these animations by using view transition and then either dash old or new to target the old or the new state of the animation or of the page. And then in this case, we're gonna target our subnav view transition name. And in there, I'm gonna define an animation duration of 50 seconds. So this way it just takes quite long and we can inspect the DOM and see what's happening. Because if I now hover and go to another element, you see that this very slow transition is happening. And what you also see is that we got a colon colon view transition element. And that element contains all of our groups and if we open them, you see that there's an old and a new element as well. And those are actually screenshots of the old and new state. And those are also the elements we're actually targeting. And we can then define our own custom animations for it if we would like, or we could change the duration like you see here. And that's also why I created a specific view transition name for the links so we can target them. We can target them by using subnav content. And then specifically for those two animations, I created two keyframe animations that we can use. And what you notice here is that they have only a from or only a to property instead of defining both of both sides of the animation. And that is because the browser fills in the rest. We only want to tell it to go from a certain translate X, but then to is the default style that will eventually be applied by the browser. And the same here, if it leaves, we only define the to state, but the from is the position in the DOM that we don't define. And if we would add this as an animation, and have, for example, 500 milliseconds, subnav content leaf, and then we use both for the fill mode, and then we also add the view transition new for subnav content, where we add the enter animation, Then you already see that something is happening. We are now controlling the animation and if I make animations, they look horrible, like you can see here. And that is because one thing that's, for example, gone now is the fade in of the animation. So let's quickly add that as well. And not only the fade in, but also the fade out. So that's why you see the old content stick around until the very end, until the browser thinks it doesn't need it anymore. So let's just add another animation of fade out to the old content and fade in to the new content. And if we open the keyframes, you see that it's simply a from zero pasty or to zero pasty. And if you then again do that, you already see that we kind of have this swiping animation going on. The only thing that is not applied yet is that direction because we're hard coding 40 pixels. However, we are setting that subnav duration that should have been direction, of course. And that direction we can use in our translate to do a calc. We do a calc of var minus minus subnav direction times 40. And we do the same thing here, calc minus minus subnav direction times minus 40. 
Then we suddenly are creating a number that's either 40 or minus 40, both for the leave and the enter, depending on the direction it's going into. And now you see that suddenly the content is coming from the right direction if you move your cursor over the sub navigations. Great, right? And then by adding a little bit of JavaScript and using all these new APIs that are coming out, you suddenly can recreate really fancy animations like Stripe's website. And like I said in the beginning, it's not perfect yet. You see that you, for example, can't use an overflow hidden, so the old links go out of the boundaries of the other element. And because you lose those pointer events when transitioning, at least for now, there's this delay that's in there. And it also happens that if you are still transitioning and quickly remove your cursor, then it could happen that the sub navigation stays open like you see now. And that's again also because the pointer events aren't called when the animation is happening. So this is not a perfect solution yet, but I think this is a very well demonstration of the power of CSS, especially all of the new CSS features that are coming. We used to write quite a bit of JavaScript for this. And now there's only a few lines we need. And even if we don't need to check for the support anymore, then it's way less. If we don't need to check for do some weird checks because we are losing pointer events, then it's even less code again. And it would be really approachable way to make animations like this. So I hope that you really enjoyed today's video because I am super excited about the future of CSS. Even though I like libraries like Frame Motion and love to teach them, my course is coming up really soon, I still think doing things in plain CSS, if it's capable of doing it, is the way to go. Why use libraries if you don't need them? So that's all I had today. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.